unthankful, unholy. The Bible talks about the violent spirit. You, you look at the story of Manuel Carrizales. You listen to him talk about how he was involved in violence. And violence is addictive. There's a very strange verse in the Proverbs that says, this kind of man can't sleep unless he shed blood. I can't even imagine somebody that their sense of well-being comes after they've committed a murder. But we're headed there. Our streets are overrun with it. And it's not just coming from the bad neighborhoods. This murder spirit that's spreading is because society has turned its back on God. Now here we go. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do, Mario Morello? What do you want me to do? First of all, I want you to look at me and admit the way, the special way that the devil is lying to you. He's lying to you like no one else. Some of you, the way he's lying is, is you're not in danger. Yes, you are. Because every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. And you could do it now where it does you nothing but good. Or you can do it then where it does nothing but pain. And so what do we do? We come to the point where we say inside of ourselves, maybe I'll try a little church, a little bit of religion, and suddenly that becomes your counterfeit. You start faking that you believe in God, all the while knowing inside of your heart that you will not break up a relationship even if God tells you to. You'll not stop a drug even if God tells you to. You'll read the Bible as talking points and not as the Word of God. You'll treat prayer as your go-to exit every once in a while. You'll go to God because you can't go anywhere else. But then you leave Him. So it's like you're burning the candle of your life for yourself and then you're blowing the smoke in God's face. And you think there's no consequence. You don't understand. The people who are in this room that are safe and those who are in danger, here's how, it's, how you can know. You're in danger if none of this moves you. You're in danger if nothing I'm saying is, feels like it's for you. You're in danger if you're sitting under this tent and you don't realize how close you are to having an incurable case. Who's the person that's safe? He's over here starting to cry right over there. It's a person that's shaking in their seat because they go, I need God. I need God. And you say, well, preacher, why don't you give them a chance to get saved? Because that's what we've done. We've created this easy, comfortable, on-ramp where we let people think they can negotiate with God when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess not that he's a babysitter not that he's a life coach not that he's a statue in the front of your car but he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings who deserves our total commitment Close your eyes. Nobody move. Mario, today I want to get right with God. Right with God. I don't want to turn over a new leaf. I don't want to take Jesus like a temporary cure. 
I want to kneel before him. I want to spread my hands up into the sky and say, you are not an object of my faith. You are not a philosophy I'm following. You are my God. You are my king. You are the reason that I am living. And I thank you that you saved me before it was too late. And I thank you that you had mercy on me to allow me to hear this sermon and make the right choice. I want you to understand that in a moment I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. If you're outside this tent, if you're watching on the live stream, I'm going to ask you in a moment to raise your hand. And I want you to understand, I'm going to ask you to get right with God. You're going to confess your sins. You're going to tell him that you're leaving everything behind so that you may know him. You're saying, I've been to church. I've carried a Bible. I've used Christian lingo. But I've never been struck by the lightning of true conversion. And I want to be saved. I want to be saved. This is where I want to say, you are Lord. This is where I want to kneel and confess that you are Lord. Lord, save me. Deliver me. Get this evil out of me. For my kids' sake. For my marriage' sake. For my sanity. For everything that really matters to me. I must get right with God. And I must do it now. Mario, how can I get right with God? Let me make it very clear. In a moment, I'm going to say a prayer. It'll be a fiery prayer, I admit it. It'll be an intense prayer, I admit it. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your broken heart to be mended, for your loneliness to evaporate, for your anxiety and your depression to be a thing of the past, for you to become a person that says, I have peace that passes understanding. I have joy unspeakable and full of glory. I now know that my life is not a cruel joke, but it has a purpose and a plan and a direction. I understand what I'm born to do now. I'm going to get right. I'm going to get clean. I'm going to be set free. Now, don't you dare keep your hand down. Don't you dare. I want you to face that day where you will stand before God with your name written in the book of life, where your statement that Jesus is Lord will be the declaration of the people of God living in inexpressive glory, saying, yes, on the earth, I received you. While I was alive, I surrendered. Mario, I want you to pray for me that tonight I will begin a new life and I will know that I am right with God. If that's you and you'll let me pray for you, put your hand in the air right now. Do it now. See, I saw your hand almost went up and then you stopped. Put it up. Surrender. Now, secondly, I want every single person in this tent and outside the tent that has your hand raised, stand up right now. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand on your feet. Get up right now. Get out of darkness. This is how you know you're free. Get up on your feet. Now I want you to find the nearest aisle. Get to the nearest aisle and walk up here and let me pray for you. As I promise you, come. Come from over here. Come from outside the tent. We're going to wait for all of you. But you need to come right now. Fill in right here. Come to Jesus. 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 
Fill in all the way over here. Workers, help us. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. to Jesus. Keep coming. We want all of you. We want all of you. You keep coming. It is so important that all of you who have come forward understand that I cannot save you. That only Christ can do this. But not one of you will be denied not one of you will be denied close your eyes even before I pray for these souls to be saved I'm standing here begging the churches of Bakersfield to take them in I'm begging you I'm begging you pastor to open your heart if anyone in your church would be offended by these people coming to your church, those people are wrong and they need to repent. And you know what, Pastor? You're going to be just as wrong as they are if you let them get away with keeping people, new people, from your church. Put your hand over your heart, every one of you standing up here. The first thing that's going to come off of you is a curse. A curse that Jesus took on the cross. The Bible instructs us to repent and believe the gospel. And it says very clearly in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, think of what I preached, by calling him Lord today, It'll be the most glorious moment for you when you see him. And the Bible says, if you will confess with your mouth that he is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Say this prayer out loud at church. Everyone in the tent, join in because you love them so much. Jesus. I see you on the cross, dying the most horrible death that man has ever invented. When you died, you proved that you loved me. You died for me because you loved me. Three days later, you came out of the grave. And when you rose again, you proved that you had the power to transform me, the power to get rid of my depression, anxiety, anger, lust, and fear. So right now, I don't hold anything back. I surrender all. I give you all of me forever I am yours I'm totally yours and I thank you Jesus that you are washing away my sin that every sin that I have ever committed is being washed away washed away right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now hold your applause, hold your applause, hold your applause. Thank you. Every one of you standing before me, look me right in the eye. These people out there, if I let them, they're going to make such a noise, your ears will be ringing for days. Don't do it. Thank you. But I want to tell you, 
that you will never in your life ever regret giving it all to Christ. This is the one decision that you will never apologize for. It was the best thing that I've ever done. Now, there are so many of you. I'm not going to guess a number, but there are several hundred of you, maybe even more than that. But the fact is, we're going to pray for you for about five minutes outside the tent. Then you're going to rejoin us, and it's just going to get even stronger in here. But I want you to focus on one thing. You're going to be prayed for, and you're going to understand with a, a trained Christian friend that you're going to make right now, they're going to take enough information from you so that we'll prove that we care about what happens to you. That's the only reason we want it. We don't want to flood you with emails. We don't want to throw you into a religious whirlpool. What we want is to just pray for you and let you know that for us, this is a strong commitment we're making to you.